Today on Xenodilodon. In this video, I'll be showing you one of the most awesome lasers that I own, and that's the Ignis 660 nanometer red DPSS laser. Between its flawless beam characteristics and the incredible engineering on the inside, I can almost guarantee you that this laser will make you want a red laser more than you've ever wanted one in your life. I'll also be comparing this laser against a couple of direct diode red lasers and going over some of the advantages of a DPSS laser over those. I also have one of these that's labeled low power output and I'll be opening up that one to check and see whether it's the pump diode or another problem inside the laser head and that will give me a good opportunity to go over some of the parts on the inside and explain how these DPSS lasers work. So what's the advantage of using a DPSS laser over a direct diode laser? Well, the biggest advantage is that you can get excellent beam characteristics, such as a nice single wavelength and a clean Gaussian beam, whereas it's very hard to achieve in power with a laser diode. Sometimes you can get good beam characteristics from a laser diode, but they're usually low powered, and these are known as single mode laser diodes. Whereas uh, when you use a more powerful red laser diode, these are often multi-mode. To help explain this, I have a couple of red lasers. This one is a 500 milliwatt, 655 nanometer laser, and this uses a C-mount laser diode. Here is a 250 milliwatt DVD burning laser diode at 650 nanometers, and this is a 700 milliwatt, 638 nanometer Eau Claro laser diode. I'm going to remove a, a beam block and there's a mirror on the other side of the room and we can see the output beams here on this black piece of glass. Now as I said, in some cases a direct diode laser can reasonably hold its own against a DPSS laser, such as the one that's used for DVD burning. I'll turn that one on. And you can see that it has a reasonably good beam profile. But what about the ones that put out more power? I'm going to Go and connect up the 500 milliwatt, 655 nanometer laser now. We can take a look at its beam profile in comparison. And you can see that the beam profile is very big compared to the DPSS and the DVD burning laser diode. Let's go ahead and compare it against the 638 nanometer Eau Claro. And it's also really big compared to those two. So the more power you get from a laser diode, in many cases, the worse the beam characteristics are. Another advantage of a DPSS laser is that it has a very thin beam, which means all the energy contained in the beam is concentrated in a very small area. So what does this mean for burning? Well, let's do a competition between these four lasers and see which one burns the best. And the DPSS laser goes right through. Now let's get inside of one of these laser heads and get a better understanding of how they work. And this one does have some damage on the inside, which is why it's marked low power. Now the previous owner of this laser and the person who runs the eBay store, Starlight Photonics, which I'll leave a link to below in the description. Tried to get more optical power out of it, but uh, could only get about 20 milliwatts. And I've already been inside of this laser head as well. And I've done my own tinkering with the optics and couldn't get more than 20 milliwatts myself. So I believe that the pump diode inside of the laser might be bad. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that later on in the video. But for now, it's just Take a look at the optics on the inside and I'll go through and tell you a little bit about what they are and what they do so that way you get a good understanding of how this laser assembly works. And take a look at that. That is an awesome laser, isn't it? Alright, let's go over the parts on the inside. 
Start off with the pump diode, which is right here. And I believe that to be a 5 watt, 808 nanometer uh, laser diode. And right on the laser die on the front of the output is a, another little lens. And that just makes the output of the pump diode more narrow. The optic following that is this one right here. And that is a cylindrical lens. And what that does is it takes the rectangular output of the pump diode and turns it into a more uniform square. After that is this lens right here. And that's a focusing lens. And what that does is it makes the output into a small little point. And that light gets sent through this optic right here, which is a piece of dichroic glass, a dielectric mirror essentially, which is the high side reflector for the Yeg crystal. Now, the Yeg crystal is in this little copper block right here, and Yeg stands for yttrium aluminum garnet, and this crystal has neodymium ions in it. Those ions have electrons, and when those electrons get excited by the 808 nanometer light, they get pumped up from the ground state, and then when they uh, drop back down to the ground state, they release a infrared wave that is larger uh, but has less energy than the 808 nanometer light. In this case, that frequency that's emitted from the Yeg crystal is 1320 nanometers. That new uh, infrared laser light hits this little reflector right here, and that laser light goes this way. Now you'll see right here that there is a little ceramic plate and that plate has a little hole in it and that's a spatial mode filter and just gets rid of the unwanted stray infrared light that's going into the uh, frequency doubling resonator which does the uh, second generation harmonic frequency doubling and that is done by the LBO crystal inside of this block You'll see the little crystal uh, right here. Let's see if I can uh, shine some laser light into it. You can see where it is. And uh, then that 1320 nanometer light hits this reflector here in the back and gets bounced back this way. So inside of the lithium triborate crystal here, uh, it does frequency doubling. So we have two waves of the 1320 nanometer light doing uh, the second harmonic generation inside of the nonlinear crystal and that gives us the 660 nanometer light that comes out of that crystal which is red. That red laser light is allowed to pass through this reflector and hits this little uh, dichroic dielectric mirror right here and then out through this lens which is a expanding lens a concave lens and the light comes out this way also goes into this uh, convex lens right here and that is the collimating lens for the red laser light there's a little glass reflector right here and that reflector shines light up into this area and you can look on the back and see that there's a photosensor here and underneath the pump diode is a thermoelectric cooler. And you'll also notice that there is another thermoelectric cooler right here that controls the temperature of the lithium triborate crystal. Uh, lots of little stuff going on inside of this laser. Let's do some pump diode tests now. The first test on the pump diode I'll be doing is to check the optical output that we're getting from the pump diode itself. And to do that, I'm going to use this little mirror right here and I'm going to reflect the pump diode light into my laser power meter so that way we can get an idea of how much optical energy is coming off the pump diode itself. Then we'll do an electrical test and roughly from what I've seen on a functioning laser there's about 1.1 amp for every one optical watt out on the 808 nanometer pump diodes. So we'll be able to check the optical output power versus the input current and get a rough idea of the actual uh, difference between those two. So for example if we see uh, a lot more current 
uh, going into the system for the optical output that we're getting out of the system, we can kind of get a good idea that the pump diode isn't functioning properly. Now, I'm going to have to wait till the laser warms up a little bit, and uh, then we'll get those numbers. Now that the laser is warmed up, we can check the output of the pump optically. And mind you, this is a pretty powerful infrared pump diode. So if you're doing any kind of checking on the pump diode inside of a laser head, keep in mind that the infrared light can be very hazardous and to use caution. And it looks like we're getting about two and a half watts. So that means our input current should be about three amps. Let's do the uh, electrical test now. Now that we have a good idea of the power coming out of the pump diode as far as optical wattage, which was about 2.6, we'll say about three watts given the losses off the reflective mirror that I used to send the pump diode light to the laser power meter we should be seeing anywhere from 3.3 to 4 amps worth of current going to the pump diode. Now if we see more than that, that's a good indicator of something called catastrophic optical damage and can be caused by too much current being fed to the laser diode or just uh, oxidation over time and this breaks down or destroys the semiconductor layers in the laser diode and uh, what happens is less optical energy will be produced as a result uh, versus the current going inside of it. So if we see any more than uh, that range, we'll probably have a good bet that there's some damage to the pump diode and that will be uh, in need of replacing. Now there's a soft start to the laser, so you'll see the uh, current rise over the next couple of minutes and we'll see where it goes up to. Uh, as I said, if it goes uh, past four amps, that's a good indicator that it's a toast diode. Now at this point, it's uh, also good to mention that the laser is in series with the pump diode. So this connection is connected to the board that normally is connecting to the positive input of the pump diode. And this negative connection from my meter is connected to the wire going to the pump diode. So that's how I'm reading it. And we should hit a stop pretty soon. And we're not. Well, that's not a good sign. Let's see where it does stop. We're about 7.4 amps. Uh, yeah, we should be getting about 5 watts of optical output. Not 2.5 to 3. So there's definitely something wrong with that pump it looks like. However, at this point we can turn off the lights and uh, get a good view of what it looks like on the inside. There's about 20 milliwatts of red laser light 
going through the head. I don't know, we get a good view of that. I hope that you have enjoyed this video on the Ignis 660 nanometer GPSS red laser and that it has helped you understand a little bit more about how these laser technologies work. If this is content that you enjoy, another laser that will be making an appearance on this channel eventually is this. The Lightwave Electronics Half Note. It's a 532 nanometer laser capable of putting out 2.5 watts of optical output. It came from an Elcon laser assembly that was made for doing eye surgery. Just another reason to stay tuned for more.